Well, I'm so lucky to have with me today Patrick Sherwin. He's the founder and CEO of uh, GoSun Stove, which is a really cool company. Uh, Justin and I have gotten your product and already started checking it out. We really love it. And so once we started using it, we're like, we got to find out more about this company. This is really cool. I think we found out about your stove itself on Kickstarter. And that's how we you know, first got hold of the stove. And I'll be honest with you, when we first were signing up on Kickstarter, we're like, eh, this is cool. We love solar, but this probably can't work. But we did it, it does work, it's really cool, and I wanna to talk to you about first, just like, let's jump in and talk about the Go Sun stove. How does this thing work? It's kind of amazing. Yeah, thanks. Uh, we, we think of it as one of the first fuel-free ovens that's really become practical and mainstream. Uh, the, the core of the technology and the reason why it works so well is based on a vacuum. Uh, we've got two layers of tough Pyrex glass and a vacuum between those, making a perfect insulator. Uh, so that's kind of a leapfrog over a lot of pre-existing solar cooking technology uh, because it, it can hold on to heat through cloudy periods into the night. Uh, it works in the freezing cold. And uh, the vacuum's virtues allow it to heat up to like 500 degrees. Uh, and so cooking is done in the same amount of time as a traditional oven or a camp stove. Uh, as, you, as we all know, the sun is plenty powerful, but it's rare that we get a chance to convert it and hold on to the heat of the sun. Uh, but GoSun does that in a way that it's actually four times more efficient than photovoltaics. And that's all because of a vacuum insulated cooking chamber. It's passive solar technology, so you're not making electricity here. We have a conversion rate that can exceed 80% at taking sunlight and turning it into heat. And all you're doing is taking food, cutting it up, putting it on a stainless steel cooking tray that slides inside a vacuum insulated chamber and the magic happens. Uh, the chef can walk away, come back and take a look at the meal that's been cooked. Moisture and heat are still trapped inside the tube. You're ready to eat whenever you are. It's, you know, the meal stays hot and juicy. So. What I liked about it was I thought there was going to be this huge learning curve and that we'd constantly have to sit there and, and move it, you know, face the sun. And basically, it was kind of anticlimactic. We put the food in, like you said, we oriented it to the sun. and It's really easy because you've got like a little red dot indicator thing. And then we just left it there for 20, 30 minutes and then came back and it was done. Um, and this wasn't a super sunny day. In fact, we did it at like 3.30 in the afternoon. It wasn't noon and it wasn't, it was like partly sunny. So the sun was coming in and out um, and it was really easy. Yeah, we've designed the reflectors to be uh, made from a compound parabola, which enables them to take on light from a lot of different angles. So you're not like a lot of ovens, solar ovens are like satellite dishes, and you have to adjust them every five minutes to make sure the laser of sunlight is pointed on the pan. Uh, with GoSun, you have a wide range, so you don't have to fester, you know, you don't, you know, the chef can walk away. Um, and the, the sun can move as much as three hours uh, and still be pretty much on target. Um, so you can go for a hike if it's a cloudy day and come back and the, and the food will be ready. The type of cooking is, is similar to a crock pot. It's sort of um, steaming and baking at the same time. You know, it's the only things that we can't grill are, are basically we can't blacken or smoke meats. Uh, but, you know, it's very easy to, to cook anything. Um, you know, bake, boil, fry. Uh, we do a lot with, you know, root vegetables and breads. Uh, it's really nice as a baking device, um, but uh, that doesn't mean that you can't do, you know, fish and, and meats, more delicate items. Um, and, and the cook quality is, is scrumptious because, you know, food's cooking in its own juices and then it stays, like I said, I keep saying it stays nice and hot and juicy, which is how I like to eat food. You know, I don't want it to be all dried out. And now you've got a Facebook community group, I guess, that are cooks all around the world who have tons of recipes and who share their experiences with this. Yeah, uh, that was one of my favorite things. We started that um, about a year after first launching the brand on Kickstarter. And uh, with overnight, about a thousand people jumped into the community group page and started posting what they were doing with their ovens. We see a lot of people, you know, like hacking, which is wonderful, you know, trying different ways. Like a guy was building an Arduino system to track the sun and to make the reflectors open and close, whether the meal was cooked. And right now, I think there's like 4,500 people in there. They're very active. I went on an odyssey uh, uh, back in February this year. I turned 40 and I decided to cook exclusively with sunshine for 40 straight days. Wow. And um, no fruits and vegetables, you know, no easy smoothies or nourishing drinks. 
And I posted a video every day in the community kitchen and on YouTube. And, you know, it was really great to see the feedback and the encouragement that I got. And people were inviting me to their house to have a solar cooked meal. So it was a real treat. I, towards the end of the, of the 40 days, I was, I, I didn't have to do much myself for like the last 10 days. I had other people picking up the, the knife and the fork to, to cut the, cut the dishes up for me. So it was great. Nice. That's awesome. That's a great way to meet people and to spread the word, huh? Definitely. Now I'm really fascinated in your story, your, your background. How did you first get into, like you're a tinkerer, you're an inventor. How did you, how did you start? Where, where are your first memories of tinkering? Oh, that goes back to, you know, as a kid playing around with Legos or, you know, helping dad fix the car. Um, he was, he, he's a real handy man. In fact, just this past weekend, I was helping him build a deck. He's 74 years old and still cranking away. So that's, you know, that's kind of where it all started. Um, we just, you know, I just love being outside and building forts and tree houses. You know, I got into solar back in high school, uh, as I started to discover the challenges that we're facing with pollution back then that was the buzz was pollution. We didn't know anything about climate change in the nineties, hardly, uh, so, so I wanted to come up with solutions to change, you know, the course that, that we're taking towards, um, you know, the, the challenges that fossil fuels have, have created. And, um, in college, I was lucky enough to find a solar company in the phone book and I called them and, and called them and called them and got a job. And the, the job at a solar company back in early 2000 was, uh, you know, dig a trench or put some siding on a building, you know, it had, had very little to do with solar, uh, except that we did get a, an occasional project. So as early as 2000, I got involved in solar off-grid electric power systems and just stayed involved in the solar energy space, which was a, a gateway for all kinds of green and clean technologies. I got into electric vehicles. The solar technology that GoSun is comprised of came from uh, the solar hot water heating industry. So I took a solar collector off of a rooftop in the year 2001. Uh, it had been installed in the early 80s, and the guy didn't want it any longer. So I, I took it home instead of sending it into the dumpster. I thought maybe I could you know, reuse this or repurpose this for something. It was only about an inch and a quarter in diameter and six feet long. So I decided I'd throw some hot dogs in there. It seemed like a natural fit because it was very hot on the inside. And the hot dogs cooked right up immediately. Within 10 minutes, they were sizzling, stuck at the bottom of this six foot long tube. So I had to figure out how to get them out. But it was like, wow, you know, that was kind of my original aha moment. Why aren't other people cooking inside these vacuum tubes? You know, this is a wonderful solar oven. I had done a, a fair amount of work with other solar cooking technologies. That muse stuck with me for over a decade before I was able to uh, commercialize it and put it in uh, into the, you know, the Kickstarter and and, and turn ghost hunting into a viable business. You know, I think of this ghost on stove as a cool thing to take, you know, camping or on a road trip. But I mean, for a lot of people, like you're saying, over 2 billion people in the world, this could actually be their means for cooking as opposed to burning a fossil fuel, you know, like charcoal or, you know, coal or, or wood. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, you know, we may not completely eliminate the use of wood, um, but if we can, if we can knock out, you know, a large percentage, the majority of it, say 60% or 80% of your daily wood consumption, then we've done a great job. And so right now we're working on several continents. We're in, um, South America, Latin America, and in Africa, we're really trying to, um, get people to at least cook like staple grains and beans and corn and inside our stove. So that those things take a lot of energy and a lot of time. And you can, you know, kind of mix up the water, add the dry beans, toss it in the sun, and then you can go back to the field or school or what have you. And uh, and then when you get home, the beans are cooked. And then, you know, maybe you use fire to make up the sauce or, you know, some fried meat, what have you. Uh, so that might be more of a traditional reality. But the beans could be made in the oven, which is 60, 80 percent of your caloric intake. And so we think we could have a real breakthrough in these environments. And we think that we can make our stove cost effective yet, yet to be seen whether we can, um, you know, really affect change on the magnitude that we're looking for. But we'd like to see our stoves being built and implemented in these environments at a fair market price that's totally affordable by, by people in poverty. 
That's so awesome. If viewers of ours are interested in checking out your stoves, I mean, what's, what's kind of their next step? They're, maybe they've watched this right now and they're kind of on the fence. They're like, this is cool. Um, where, where would you steer them next? Should they go to your website? Should they watch some of your videos? Yeah, check out our website at gosun.co. Uh, and then if you're on Facebook, you might enjoy seeing what other people have to say or do. Uh, Facebook.com backslash groups backslash gosun is where our community group is. Um, we have a, a decent YouTube channel. Uh, nothing is as nice as yours, but we're slowly building, and uh, we have tons of fun sharing what we're doing. Well, I have to bring this back around to EVs because we're a big EV show here. And you know, when we're driving in a Tesla, and all of us are going to, like, say, a supercharger, we're going to be at that supercharger for probably 20 minutes to an hour. And I think that GoSun stoves are a perfect fit for when you're going on that road trip. Uh, usually road trips are in the spring and summer and fall, right? The, you know, the sunny months. Um, bring along a GoSun. And when you get to the supercharger and you're hungry, do your cooking right there. Like it seems like a perfect fit. Do you think this is a good uh, road trip kind of a device product? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, the the GoSun Sport is uh, small enough to, to bring anywhere at seven pounds, get it with the Pro Pack, and it comes with a carrying case and a couple of bells and whistles. And the, the newest product we just launched is the GoSun Go, and that's actually uh, just two pounds. And that, you know, you can put that in the dashboard. Um, but I, I think that I, may, I might need to talk to Tesla about, you know, our GoSun station, our larger scale, so that when you arrive, you'd have a preheated oven you know, grab whatever you had in the cooler and toss it in there and, and you know, the cooking could be on it. That would be a great fit on all those solar powered supercharger stations. That would be awesome. I mean, we're going to be getting the Tesla semi truck uh, when it comes out. We're number 65 on the list and we're going to be traveling the entire country showing that off. I would love to get out of the truck and at our events, take out some solar stoves put them out and cook food for people. I think that would be just so fantastic because typically you get to an event like that and what it's charcoal, it's you know natural gas, propane. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be so great to not be burning anything to cook. Yeah, Zach, let us know. We'd love to come up with a design to help fit a, uh, a ghost on station on the side of your Tesla truck. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, that would be a dream come true for me as well. And um, when I did that 40 days of sunshine, I left the station out in the sun every morning, every night. It was just out there. And that product really served. Um, I mean, I, it kept up with any hunger demands I had and I had more excess food to feed, to feed the community. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all about it. Um, we're actually launching a solar electric hybrid stove oh, wow. as well. So that's going to be super exciting. That's coming out on Kickstarter here very soon. In fact, and um, what that is is basically an electric integrated heating element that goes underneath the food on, onto the cooking tray. Okay. And so with the flip of a switch, you're cooking in the absence of sunlight. Um, you're using 150 watts as opposed to 1,500 watts on the traditional stove at home. Wow. And so that enables you to do uh, remote cooking, So you know, which is thanks to the lithium-ion battery advent, I mean, we can – we can run this sto stove off of a small, can't remember the amp hours. I think it's like 45,000 milliamp hour little battery. You know, it's uh, maybe two, three pounds, couple laptop batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, we can run and cook an entire meal for the family. That's so cool. Yeah, I would love to talk to you further offline about, you know, we've got the cooking show, the vegan cooking show with Brent and Bobby, and I think it would be great if they started cooking some meals uh, solar, hybrid solar. That would be so exciting to do. Yeah, well, we, we'd love to style you out. Uh, you guys are, are right up our alley, and thanks for sharing the good word. I, I love uh, that now I know. Thank you for doing everything you're doing. Thank you for all the tinkering. I love that you're not stopping. You just, you're just you coming out with new products. So um, please let us know when that Kickstarter comes out so we can let our viewers on Tesla Time News know about it because I think a lot of our viewers would be totally into uh, this new product. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I think there's a great alignment here with what you're doing. I mean, we're one, one of the buzzwords we've used is energistas. You know, we're we're interested in making sure everyone is literate about their energy use and their production. And, you know, we'd love to help fuel people's lives and fuel their brains and, and keep inspiring. That's what this is all about. I mean, we can basically power our own lives thanks to, you know, what you're seeing with Tesla and Solar City. Um, you know, this is this technology, you know, something I've been a part of for a couple decades and I firmly believe I'll be solar powering my entire life within the next decade 
And I'd like to see, you know, everyone around the world get closer and closer as we all know we need to. That's so awesome. Thank you so much, Patrick, for taking the time today to talk to us. I'm so excited about your company and we'll definitely be talking to you soon. All right. Yeah. And thank you, Zach. Now, you know, (laughs) thanks, Patrick.